Welcome to a discussion of the delta ratio. I'll walk you through why we use this, what the numbers mean, and I'll actually reverse derive the actual numbers uh, with a couple of simple examples because I think that helps the understanding tremendously. So to start, why do we use this? So let's say we have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, or in this case, we'll just call it a HAGMA. The three things we expect to change is the anion gap should go up, our bicarb should go down, and our CO2 should appropriately go down as well. In the prior video, we talked about Winter's formula. And what Winter's try to do is ask the question, is there another respiratory uh, alkalosis, right? If I know what the actual bicarb is, and I had another process that drove the CO2 even lower, if I knew these two values, I could calculate another respiratory process. What the delta ratio tries to answer is the other side of the coin, which is, is there a secondary metabolic, metabolic process? Okay, the two main categories of this are gonna be one, a metabolic alkalosis, alkalosis. So you could imagine if I have my HAGMA and I, on top of that, have a metabolic alkalosis, my anion gap shouldn't really change much, but now I have a process that's gonna drive my bicarb higher, right? The second type of secondary metabolic process is gonna be a NAGMA or a non anion gap metabolic acidosis, okay? In this process, because it's a non-anion gap process, our anion gap also stays about the same, but now our bicarb is gonna be even lower, all right? So what the delta ratio tries to calculate is effectively if I can know the ratio of just the anion gap and the bicarb, I should be able to tell, is it just a HAGMA or if there's one of these things involved as well. So let's talk about the actual formula itself. It's pretty simple. The delta ratio is the delta anion gap over the delta bicarb. And by delta, what it means is the difference between the expected anion gap and the actual anion gap. In this case, our expected anion gap is gonna be 12. So it's gonna be the actual anion gap minus 12 over, and we'll use a standard bicarb of 24. So in this case, it's gonna be 24 minus what the actual bicarb that we measure is. Okay. Now, before I go into the actual cutoffs, I think it's better to derive these numbers with a couple of simple math formulas or, or um, examples, and then it'll make a lot more sense. Okay. So here we have those three scenarios I talked about above. We'll start with the one in the middle, which is just a pure anion gap metabolic acidosis. For simplicity's sake, let's say we have an anion gap of 22 and a bicarb of 14, all right? We'll plug this into our formula. So in this case, this is gonna be 22 minus, 22 is our actual anion gap that we measured with an expected of 12, 12 being the normal, over our expected bicarb, which is 24, minus our actual bicarb, which is 14. This gives us 10 over 10, or one. So in this case, the delta ratio is one. 
Now we'll do that same thing, but kind of tweak the numbers for a secondary metabolic process. So now we have the example up here. The anion gap metabolic acidosis with a metabolic alkalosis. So again, our anion gap shouldn't change, but we still have anion gap of 22. But now we have something that's driving our bicarb up. In this case, we'll use an example of 20. All right, we'll plug this number in again. So we have 22 minus 12 over 24 minus 20. Now we have 10 over 4 or 2.5. So the delta ratio here is going to be 2.5, much higher because we've raised the bicarb. We've increased the denominator. Now we'll walk through our last ratio, which is going to be the situation down here. We have a anion gap metabolic acidosis and a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. In this case, our, because we, the second process doesn't change the anion gap, it's still 22, but now my bicarb is even lower. Let's say it's four. What if we plug these numbers in? 22 minus 12 over 24 minus four. Now we have 10 over 20 or 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So now you see a high delta ratio suggests a secondary metabolic alkalosis and a low one, oops, put that in the wrong spot, 0 0.5, here we go. Uh, and a low one suggests a secondary acidotic process. So to put the hard guidelines on, anything between one to two, a delta ratio between one and two, is suggestive of a pure HAGMA, a pure high anion metabolic acidosis. If you have something greater than two, then we think it's a HAGMA plus an alkalosis, a metabolic alkalosis. And then if you have a value less than one, that's gonna be your HAGMA plus your NAGMA, all right? So now that you see how it's derived, you could easily, if someone gave you the numbers, calculate an anion gap and then see the actual bicarb they gave you. The only things you have to memorize is a normal anion gap of 12, a normal bicarb of 24, and you can calculate the delta ratio. Once you know the delta ratio, if it's one to two, you know it's a HAGMA. Greater than two, you know there's a secondary metabolic alkalosis, and if it's less than one, then you know there's a secondary metabolic acidosis, in this case, a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.